Okay, Dr. Dave Webster, and this is part two of my video on men with prostate cancer in Ontario, and I assure you, you are in the government's uh, sites right at the moment, and you're going to be getting special attention. I know the process is about to start, uh, and Cancer Care Ontario McMaster colleagues were going, are going to be coming up with the answer uh, the government uh, expects them to have to justify the policy they already have decided on. So this is part two. Um, this I can't emphasize again enough the revolution that's occurring in the hope that this new agent uh, is occurring in prostate uh, cancer, uh, not only just in imaging, but you'll see how it's intimately tied into treatment of prostate cancer, and it's called prostate specific membrane antigen, or PSMA for short. And uh, the rate that we have actually two uh, PET tracers to image uh, these cancer antigens, and one is the standard F18 PSMA. You remember that mostly when we image with glucose, we're using uh, F18 glucose, that's the major use for PET, but it turns out for reasons I'm not going to go into, gallium-68 uh, PSMA uh, it has some advantages. Now, I'm greatly indebted to a good friend and colleague I've known for many, many years, Dr. Kevin Tracy. Uh, no one has spent more in this province efforts of trying to get mobile pet access for, for patients. 50% um, in the U.S. has performed enough mobile access, but uh, the government does, simply doesn't want patients to have access to mobile pet because along with that would come a bit wider spread knowledge and they could no longer hide the lie. That is Cancer Care Ontario. Um, Dr. Tracy and I have been involved uh, for over the years in trying to do this. We've been in several articles in uh, the Sudbury Star and so on about getting mobile PET. Now he uh, did a very a lot of work and produced this piece of work here called PSMA, PET Scanning and Theranostics and Prostate Cancer. It will be on my website. It is available if you just search the internet for it. It's a remarkable piece of work. Um, but from that I'm going to use some of the parts that he's uh, kindly let me use. And one of them we can use C is that this gallium 68 PSMA can be used for screening of cancer or uh, directing needle biopsies and identifying metastasis as you'll see at much lower levels of PSA. I think you'll find it quite remarkable. Um, but more importantly, the PSMA also can turn out to, to treat prostate cancer and really is one of the first developments in, 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 in my lifetime certainly where we can begin to offer some hope for prostate cancers. This, this is offering that we might eventually be able to get the death rate from prostate cancer down in the range we're now seeing uh, for women with breast cancer because there's been so much uh, development with breast cancer agent treatment for women and men with breast cancer. So it's also, of course, can be used to follow therapeutic responses. And so looking at screening with gallium-68 PSMA, uh, we can screen and stratify patients uh, with no diagnosis of cancer um, in the beginning. And then if we, they have cancer, we can identify whether it's significant widespread cancer or just very localized to, say, a small area of the prostate. And, of course, directing biopsy using, interestingly, PET-MR and ultrasound is one way of doing it, uh, as you will see. So here's a case of a 73-year-old male. Um, he's had a serum uh, PSA. It's 38, almost 4. So uh, there's very good, very likely this man has prostate cancer. They simply can't find it. And in fact, he's undergone two transrectal ultrasounds. So they put a rectal ultrasound probe in, and they, they put a needle in his prostate, and they both come up negative. Uh, and he's gone through this, and of course, there's a delay in between, and you can imagine the anxiety and so on. Um, however, uh, when you look at the prostate-specific uh, membrane antigen gallium, you can see very clearly here it's sitting in the prostate. This is the MR image, and now we can see this where to put the needle exactly. And yes, the biopsy became back positive, and the man could finally, after all this waiting and anxiety, get proper treatment. This was published in uh, 2014 in the Journal of Nuclear Medicine. Now, it can also be used, of course, in staging, as you might expect, and our metastatic disease present. Is it just in the pelvis? And if so, can we give radiotherapy there, and uh, is it more distant? Um, now, here's a case of a gallium-68 PSMA scan um, with stage 4 disease widespread, as you can see. It's also found in some normal tissues like liver and spleen and kidneys, and these are the salivary glands here, and so it would have radiation uh, damage to these areas areas here, and we, like anything, we need to use it properly and with caution, uh, but that has been already worked out. So let's, um, another role is looking for early local recurrence.
concerns. So I've said a PSA of four is considered normal in a pa in a patient who has a prostate. If you've had a prostatectomy and it's uh, in successful treatment, and your PSA effectively should be zero since there's no normal prostate cells. A little more complicated if you've been treated with radiation therapy uh, for your prostate cancer, and we'll be getting into that. But the point is, if your if your PSA level is rising, that is very worrisome. There should be no source of PSA because the uh, prostate is gone and must be. It presumably is from cancer cells. Now here's a case example. This patient, four years after successful treatment, it's beginning to rise. You know, 1.1 to 1.5. Well, you know, they can of course find it, and eventually this man. This is a couple, you know, year year and a half or so later, and it's now seven. So you can imagine, you know, this man's waiting every three months or so. You know, gets his blood test in the doctor's office, waiting. It's going up. And they're looking, doing everything they possibly can to try and find it, and yet, of course, they can't find it. But it's clearly there. You can imagine a lot of men with prostate cancer live with this on a daily basis. Um, but here, let's, I don't have his pictures, but let's look at this case example, again, published in the journal Nuclear Medicine, 64-year-old with a piece of prostate cancer and a radical prostatectomy, uh, and his PSA blood test is now 0 0.61 nanograms per mil. Let me repeat that. That's less than 1 mil nanogram per mil, 0 0.61. And here's his images, and you can see this very, very small and early recurrence of prostate cancer. And wouldn't you rather know about it then? rather than when it is 7 and of course guess what's going to happen in the meantime when you're waiting to go from 0.61 to 7 in Ontario uh, you know it's going to be getting potentially more aggressive and certainly will have an opportunity to spread uh, to other sites and make it harder to treat eventually. Now, um, another term I'm going to introduce that Dr. Tracy introduces in his nice little presentation there is called Theranostics. It's two word therapy and gnostics or diagnostics. So we're developing molecular diagnostic tests, including imaging tests with gallium 68 PSMA, for example, in tandem with targeted therapies. And in this case, as we'll see, we can use the PSMA to both view and treat the cancer uh, remarkably. Now, radiotheragnostics mean ra means using radioactive substances as a therapy. One you're going to be familiar with is when people with thyroid cancer, you've probably heard or certainly if you've had thyroid cancer, know that we, for the past 30 or 40 years we've been using a radioactive therapy agent called radioactive iodine or I-131. It's simply uh, a standard part of the procedure nowadays. It is very effective in managing these patients. Now when it comes to prostate cancer, we actually have two common ones now. One is called lutetium-177 PSMA. The other is actinium 225 PSMA. Now these are not pet tracers. These are uh, these are agents which have very short range radioactive uh, therapy agents in them, and I'll do that in another video. But uh, they are short range. In fact, if, you know we actually can't see this stuff in the body because it's very short range radiation. It deposits its energy right into the cell that it's attached to, and very effective at killing. Now, the question everybody's asking around the world, and the buzz is, and are excited about, and a good possibility is that this PSMA will become the equivalent of I-131 in thyroid cancer therapy, such that it'll simply become routine, uh, both for imaging and management, of course, unless you live in Ontario. So let's now look at theranostics again. So first of all, we can use gallium-68 uh, PSMA to image the patient. So let's look at this image again, and what are we actually looking at? Remember, these are the, the, the PSMA sites on cancer cells throughout the body. Where there isn't cancer, there's no uptake of this agent, right? So the point is if we now use the PSMA, but now give it the lutetium treatment agent, guess where it's going? It's going to all these sites and only these sites, by the way. It's not going to these areas in the bone here where there's no metastasis or in the soft tissue and so on. It's only going absolutely where it's needed, which is exactly how radioactive I-131 works with thyroid cancer. Now, as we, you know, it can and cause damage to other tissues, but again, this can all be taken into consideration. Um, but then, of course, once we've treated it, we now want to see if it's been effective. So we go back to our gallium image agent, and here we can see an amazing example of a patient who uh, routinely uh, would be written off as, as being failed therapy to now, this is uh, the 20th of December uh, 2014, uh, and here we borrow by June 2015. And as you can see, we are not able to image any cancer at that point. How remarkable 
is that. But again, you live in Ontario, don't you? So um, this has created such a buzz that in uh, Valencia, uh, Spain, in February of 2018, there was such an interest that the uh, an enthusiasm, the, the European Association of Nuclear Medicine had a focus group, which meant they just dealt with one issue and one issue only, and that was molecular imaging and theranostics in prostate cancer. It was a massive meeting. There were about 34 panelists, and I have used this group, and in particular, Dr. Rodney Hicks, because those who've seen my previous videos know that what Dr. Rodney Hicks said to me was, and I quote, Ontario has the most egregious and politically motivated agenda against PET, read our patients, like our prostate cancer patients, in the world. So, uh, I know that from talking to my urology college, pa patients are already flying to Germany uh, and the U.S. and various places to get, find, to get the modern uh, investigation and management of, of their prostate cancer. Um, and here's an example. I'll show you of a, a Sudbury patient who went to UCLA in California. I did some pet training in UCLA uh, to have his PSMA scan, and the oncologist asked me to look at the images. Now, just to orient, this is the gallium-68 PSMA in the patient's bladder. This is the CT portion of the study, uh, and these are the patient's hip. This is be uh, you know the patient's uh, right hip and the left hip, uh, and here we can see this little tiny spot right at the rectum here, uh, that very little tiny spot at an early recurrence, and there is simply no other way on the planet at this moment that we could pick up prostate metastasis this early, and wouldn't that be when you wanted to pick it up? However, what about the rest of the vast majority of patients with prostate cancer, uh, men in Ontario? They simply don't have the ability, financial resources, or even knowledge to know that this is available, and I'm going to make sure that they do, hopefully. So, men with prostate cancer, I assure you, are uh, in the sites of the government right now. The Cancer Care Ontario and McMaster groups are already uh, tuning up their, 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 their tools to make sure they come up with the answer the Liberals want. However, um, you need to understand, of course, that the Liberals have already decided that that because that's how they do it um, and, and they're, they're in the process of doing this. But of course we're in the middle of an election coming up in June and that doesn't necessarily mean the Liberals will be there. In fact, that's possibly a good thing uh, because now we have a chance with the Pro Ontario Progressive Conservatives. Now the big question now remains, and I've been in conversation with Mr. Jeff Urich numerous times, um, will the PCs simply pick up where the Liberals left off and, and simply continue on assaulting patients in this province and keeping us in the dark ages of how medicine is done in, in, in the modern world? Um, or will they be prepared to challenge Cancer Care Ontario and bring the lie that is Cancer Care Ontario to an end um, and finally bring Ontario patients into the era of personalized molecular medicine. What I can tell you is that the NDP, uh, and I'll have other videos to say on that, uh, they're the party of the people, right? Yeah, right. Uh, but they will not stand up for these few patients, uh, so don't even bother thinking about it. Uh, you're welcome to challenge them, but I can assure you, Prime Minister Gentleman is at least right here in Sudbury, and, and she will not touch this issue. Now, um, so for those men with prostate are concerned about that, as I've said to other cancer patients, you need to leave Ontario if you want proper access to modern, modern management of your cancer. Or stay here and become part of the effort that I'm trying to coordinate to not let up on politicians until the end the era where you are you as prostate cancer patients are only seen as red ink on a spreadsheet. And we can do this because we have an election coming. So what I'm hoping people will do was we need to make this an election issue and we're going to have to use social media on steroids because I will have other videos to talk about this, but you don't need to be told that this is going to, we're going to do this in spite of the best efforts of our quotes, trusted professional journalists and news anchors who have spent the last 15 years bearing this information to shield the government from criticism because that's what journalists do, isn't it? Um, so in my next video, what I'm going to do, I've mentioned this man before, a remarkable man, Sam Bruno, unfortunately died of colon cancer a number of years ago, I believe 2009, his family still here, their efforts have to promote PET and just cancer in general have been remarkable. These are an extraordinary group of people. Um, but I've mentioned that the Liberals uh, and the Ontario's buds and Budsman went out of their way to silence this man with colon cancer. We're not going to understand why. That's going to involve Ms. Deb Matthews, currently a sitting politician as well, and she was Minister of Health at the time, and I've talked about Mr. Andre Moran, uh, the Ombudsman of Ontario, and how they uh, silenced Sam, and sadly they did silence Sam. And Ms. Matthews, as you will see, will insult the man after his death when he couldn't defend himself.
Um, so, um, for those who don't already know, uh, currently I'm on a Facebook issues page here, and I've got the video blog active. Um, I'm not sure how effective that's been. This is my uh, uh, my Gmail site, so please, G uh, you know, give me an email if you want me to talk more. But uh, finally, I am actually going to in the next week or so. It's it's now uh, what March, yeah, it's first of April, I guess. But we're I'm going to have my Twitter feed up, and I'm going to use it properly, not like Donald Trump do. I just want the right questions to ask people, and I will have my web web page up my web page uh, developers coming up next week and we're finally going to get this up and running but again if you're concerned about what you're seeing I can assure you the only way this is going to happen is if we do everything we possibly can on social media to make this an election issue so thanks for listening and uh, please like uh, my YouTube videos whatever and do whatever we can to make this happen thanks